is confident. Welcome to our second part of uh, the trigonometry where I'm focusing on the general solution. And as I said previously, this is very, very important for those who are doing their project 11 because you'll be examined on it as well as those who are doing the metric. You can actually find similar questions for your metric or for your grade 12 final exams. And of course, in grade 12, there is an, an addition to these, but the main concept is covered in grade 11. I will encourage you, therefore, to make sure that you follow all these five part lessons that I'm doing. Now, let us look again at the second question. It says, determine the general solution of the following equation. And we're given an equation here. And this particular question is five marks. So how do I go about finding the general solution here? The first things, first, I need to solve for x. I need You need to know how to solve for x for that. Now, if I write this down, I have 2 cos squared x plus 5 sine x is equal to 4. You need to know the strategy on how you go about solving this whenever you're given cos squared and you're given sine. And your way to go here is to remember the identity. You always need to know this identity. Cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. This is a, the identity that always helps you to solve whenever you're given, given two, two different trick um, ratios. In this case, is cos, I mean tricks, cos and sine. So how do you combine the two? You can combine the two through the use of this identity here. Since we are given cos squared, I can actually make cos squared here the subject. So what I'm going to do is to take sine squared to the other side, where I will have cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. Why am I doing? So that the cos squared will be replaced by sine and wherever there is that cos squared, I'm going to put sine. The main aim is to make sure that everything now has become sine. Let me do it so that you can see what I'm talking about. So what we have now here is where there is cos squared, remember, I will put 1 minus uh, sine squared x. So I'll be having 1, which is 2. Don't forget the 2 because it's 2 times. So it's 2 bracket. Again, it's very important to put that bracket to protect the negative sign here, which is that minus sine squared x, okay, plus 5 sine x is equal to 4. Now, what do you notice? Just check where there was a cos is now sine, but the sine and the sine makes me easier now to solve this kind of the equation. I've eliminated cos. Now I'm able to deal strictly with sine. Yes, it is sine squared, but you will see how easier now it is to deal with this particular sine squared. And the key thing there is the quadratic uh, equation, which you can use the quadratic formula or any way of factorizing. Now let us open this bracket here, 2 times 1, it's 2, minus 2 times negative sine x, it's minus 2 sine squared x, I'm opening the bracket, plus 5 sine x is equal to 4. So you need to know your, your trigonometry algebra, it's very important for you to know this. Now what I need to do then is to uh, solve this when I have to have it in quadratic, uh, in a quadratic uh, formula way or quadratic general quadratic equation. So this is minus two sine squared x, all right? Then it's plus five sine x, and then I take four to join, so it will be in this case minus four. If it comes this side, it will be, but I have also a 2 here, so it will be plus 2 minus 4 equal to 0. See what I'm doing there? Then I have to add those numbers, which is minus 2 sine squared x plus 5 sine x. 
and then minus 2 equal to 0. Now at this stage I am able to then um, just want to show you something. This is similar to a quadratic equation. Remember the quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. This is identical to the quadratic equation and you can see in this case this becomes my a that 5 becomes my b and this minus 2 becomes my c so basically that is that and i have to use the quadratic formula in this case and the quadratic formula is if i can write it is x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided or all over 2a so I can then use the quadratic formula also here and it will be equal to now remember I'm not solving for x I'm solving for sine x so now I don't write x is equal to so when there is x now I write sine x is equal to then it's minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a now there are many ways of solving this guys I, I usually choose the quadratic formula by default because it actually saves time especially if there are no factors but you can always use any way of solving this by recognition by factorizing by product sum method anything can solve it but for grade 12 and 11 i encourage the quadratic equation so in this particular case let me just check again if we didn't make some errors here so our um, when we opened it was minus 2 so everything is fine b is 5 all right so now let's solve it where there is a b which is minus 5 plus or minus square root of 5 squared minus 4 my a is negative 2 you can see that and my c is equal to uh, negative 2 again and this is all over 2 and my a is negative 2 so that's what we are given for sine x therefore sin x is equal to just uh, use your calculator much quicker for you is minus 5 let's start with the positive one square root of 5 squared minus 4 negative 2 and here it's negative 2 again and then this is all over 2 into negative 2 all right so get the first answer x i mean sine x is equal to half let's go backwards we say sine x is half if we go back put a negative and sine x is 2 so I've got sine x equal to half or sine x is equal to 2. So now I want you to pay attention because this is where your answers are going to come from at this stage. So you have your two, um, uh, your two answers, sine x is half and sine x is that. But now what you need to do, if I can take a calculator here, remember at this stage um, on 2, if I wanted to find x, I was going to say x is equal to arc sine, then it will be arc sine 2. So if I take a calculator and say arc sine 2, it will be shift arc sine 2 and it will give me an error. So when you come to a number that is greater than 1 or less than, I mean, remember sine can have uh, plus or minus 1 within this range. Uh, it can be a fraction, it can be a decimal, but it can be greater than 1. It cannot be um, a less than minus 1. So that is what you need to know about that. So whenever, in other ways, when you write it, the region for sine, it is uh, minus 1 is less than or equal to x. x is less than or equal to 1. This is the region. Anything below 1 won't do anything. Above 1 will not do. So this is... Uh, you need to know your graph for sign. Now, when you come here, you're going to say no solution. You leave it like that. It's a mark on its own just to state that there is no solution. So you focus now on the next one. And the next one is this one you say sign 
I can just write it here as delf space, which says, um, I still have this one here, which says sine x is equal to minus 1 over 2. Now I can find x is equal to x sine minus 1 over 2. And when you find your x there, this will be our reference angle in this case. So you say shift up sign. Um, actually, it was not negative there. I think I'm changing it now. It was 1 over 2. So let me be careful there. I don't know why I'm putting that negative. There is no negative. It was just a positive. So it is shift up sign 1 over 2. We've got a positive one, so shift up sign and it's 1 over 2. And if I do that, in this case, it will be equal to 30 degrees. So I've got x is equal to 30 degrees. Now let me just check a few things to make sure that my, uh, my answers are correct. Remember, I did the quadratic formula. We said x was equal to, um, in this case, it was equal to a half. So I just want to check something here. Let me just cross-check this quadratic equation here. It's minus 5, just to make sure I didn't make an error, plus square root of bracket 5 squared minus 4 into Remember, it's minus 4ac, and my a is negative 2. My c is um, negative 2. This is just to cross-check uh, and make sure that I didn't make an error. And 2 and my a, in this case, is negative 2. Just to see what it gives me. Sign, it's a half, and then put a negative. And so all the answers are positive, so that's fine. So shift x sine half is x is equal to 30. And this, we say it, it is called the ref angle. So that is your reference angle. Now, when you've got this angle now, you need then to express this as a general solution. How do you express that as a general solution? This is how you put it in this case. Remember... As I'm saying, I'm trying to make it much slower for you to understand uh, without hurry. I'll go back to my cast diagram and I'm dealing with sign. Remember, all students take chemistry. And now sign is positive. Since sign, the reference angle is positive. Or since here we say sign x is equal to half, we have a positive sign there. It means whenever we're looking for our answers, we're going to look at the region where sine is positive. And sine is positive in the first quadrant, as you can see here, and also in the second quadrant. Now, in the first quadrant, the answer, you write it like this. For the first quadrant, you are going to say x is equal to 30 degrees. That is for the first quadrant plus k 360. Right, and then remember K is an element of Z that you must always include so that you have the condition for K. That is what you do for the first quadrant. Now for the second quadrant, you are also going to say X is equal to, you need to know the reduction rule for the second quadrant. We have 90 plus theta and we have 180 minus theta. Now we don't use 90 plus theta in the reduction uh, in the general formula. We use only the 180 minus theta in this quadrant. So we're going to say 180 degrees minus, but what is our theta? Our theta in this case is our x. So that is where you have, in this case, instead of saying theta, you can actually say x there. So it's 180 minus x, which is 30 degrees, then you again you say plus k 360. Again, remember the condition, k is an element of z. After that, you subtract there, which is equal to 180 minus 30. It is 150 degrees plus k 
360. So this is the general solutions for both answers of, I mean, for sine x is equal to 1 over 2. That's what they expect from you whenever you're dealing with this uh, general solution. I hope this makes sense to you guys and join me again in the third part of this lesson. Why am I doing that? Because I want you to get a full spectrum of these lessons so that whenever the question comes twisted in whatever form, you know that in all these lessons, the answers are found. I mean, whatever they are giving you, you will know that I have to utilize different strategies within these five lessons that I've been giving you and you will want to have some struggles whenever you're solving them. Therefore, I will encourage you to grab hold of the third lesson that is coming. Whenever you see it, please give yourself time to watch it. It's just a short video. It's not going to take much of your time, but it will go a long way in making you understand without any doubt the general solution questions. They are worth five months and above and I want you to grab everything. Remember to subscribe, remember to share the channel. If you don't subscribe, unfortunately, you won't, you won't see new videos when we add them. So I'll encourage you to go ahead and subscribe. Press the subscription button below and you're good to go. Thank you.